All right, so in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to make homemade pico de gallo. This is something I started making for myself a few years ago just to have a you know, healthy but delicious snack on the weekend. So you know, there's really only a few things you need to, you know, to make it. Uh, you know, it's really simple. It'll take you know, 15, 20 minutes. So what I do is I'll use six you know, Roma tomatoes, then you know, one onion, and then three jalapenos, one bunch of cilantro, and then I'll use just this pre-juiced container of lime juice that you can get at the grocery store. It'll be a lot cheaper than you know, squeezing the juice out of real limes where you know, if you do you know, four to eight limes, depending on how much you want, you know, with the price of limes today, you could be looking at you know, five, six, seven dollars in just limes alone, whereas this pre-juiced stuff It'll be like a dollar twenty for you know the same amount, if not more, you know, lime juice. Now I've picked up a few kitchen gadgets that make this go a lot quicker. You know, I was using only a knife and a cutting board to do this. Uh, you know, it probably took me you know half an hour to forty minutes to cut everything up by hand, and I've been able to roughly cut that in half with all of these kitchen tools. So you know, I, I will use a knife for a few cuts. I have this. A little device that'll help dice vegetables that you can get on Amazon. I think it was like $25 or $30. Totally worth it. That saves a, you know, a lot of cutting with a knife. I have this food processor that I'll use you know, to chop up the cilantro really quickly versus having to do it with a knife. And then depending on how spicy you want it to be, you might want to remove the cores from the jalapenos to get rid of some of that spice. So I have this jalapeno core that you know saves a little bit of time over... You know, using a knife as well. You know, I'll use just a regular spoon to stir everything up. And then, you know, the spatula just helps get everything out of the food processor and the, you know, dicer. So why don't we get started? The way I do it is I'll cut up the tomatoes first. So I'm just taking a Roma tomato and I'll cut it in half. And I'm going to do that for all six tomatoes first. So I'll just take them and, you know, cut them in half along the long side of the tomato. You know, just like this. So, you know, it goes fairly quickly. If you weren't using the dicer, you'd have to, you know, do several more cuts along the long side of the tomato and then cross cut it to, you know, get that same dicing effect, but it's going to be, you know, so much faster. So now that I've cut all six tomatoes, I'm just going to start, you know, putting each half into the tomato dicer. And it's just really quickly going to do all of those other cuts for me so that I don't have to do them with a knife. So this is probably, you know, out of all the different gadgets that I mentioned, this is going to save the most time, just since there's more tomatoes than any of the other, you know, ingredients that I'm using. So this will save you the most cuts if you, you know, are only going to invest in one of these. So, yeah, there you have it. Less than a minute, all the tomatoes are cut up. I'm just going to dump that you know, down into my container here and we'll be ready for you know the next one one thing I'm going to do now that my tomatoes are cut I just add a small sprinkling of some table salt on there less really is more here you don't want to add just a ton of salt to it or it'll be you know, overwhelmingly salty but just a little bit does help with the flavor then I'm going to stir it up a little bit so the next thing I'm going to do is move on to my cilantro so the way my grocery store does it, you know, they have this, you know, little twist tie right here. So I'll cut above the twist tie, and that's going to get rid of mostly stems. You're not really losing a whole lot of cilantro. And then I'm going to go ahead and load it up into my food processor. And let me see if I can get this on camera a little bit better. Put it on top of my cutting board for now. So I'm just going to dump it all into my food processor. This one's kind of nice because it has this plastic thing that helps load it and push everything down. So you, know, you may have to put it in there in some smaller, you know, smaller bunches and then you know, just you know, get it pushed down in there. So there we go, just about all, all loaded. And yeah, there we go. Now that we've got it all loaded in there, 
I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. And then I use the puree setting just so it keeps the blade spinning. If I use Chop on this particular one, it's a, it's a Ninja brand. It'll spin about three times and then stop, and you have to just do that over and over. So I found puree is the best way to do it. And, you know, there you go. It's probably five to ten seconds, and my cilantro is all chopped up. I'm going to go ahead and take the lid off of the food processor and move it back over. And this one, the actual cutting cup, is removable. So the first thing I'll do is I'll go ahead and take the blades off and there'll be a little bit of cilantro on there. I'm just going to use my spatula to you know, help pull all of that off of the blades. And then I'm going to go ahead and take the cup and you know, dump everything out. And then the spatula will you know, help me get rid of everything that's you know, stuck on the sides here. So I'm just going to dump as much of it as I can you know, down, down into my container here and you know, get it in there with the tomatoes. All right, so that's probably about as much as I'm gonna be able to get. So now we'll go ahead and mix everything up. So, you know, the stirring doesn't have to be perfect. There's gonna be, you know, several more ingredients that are gonna, you know, go in here. But, you know, the idea is just to start, you know, mixing it a little bit before moving on to the next ingredient. So there we go, and then you know, obviously try to make sure that it you know, doesn't fall out over the side. So the next thing I'm gonna do is move on to my onion. So I'm gonna cut the two ends off of it where the skin kinda comes together. And then you know, I'll just throw those away. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is cut the onion in half. And you know, now it makes it a lot easier to remove the skin on the outside of it. And, one thing that helps, you know, I'm sure if you've ever cut up an onion, you get that you know, burning sensation in your eyes. If you leave it in the fridge for a while before you cut the onion, it usually you know, lessens that. It has something to do with the gases that it gives off, and if it's you know, colder, it's less likely to do that. Uh, so, you know, in this case, it's been in the fridge for about a day, uh, but it doesn't necessarily have to be that long, or if you're going to you know, cut it up right after coming home from the grocery store. You can always put it in the freezer just for a few minutes to cool it down and I almost never get that burning sensation in my eyes. Now this one, you know, I guess I didn't catch this at the store. There's a little bit of a blemish on the onion here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and you know, cut that off, and throw it away and yeah, now we can go ahead and do the rest of the cuts here. So I have to do a little bit more cutting on the onion than I do the tomatoes just to get it to fit in my you know dicer here. So I'm just gonna do about four cuts along the short side of the onion on um, you know each one. And yeah, you, know, you may adjust that a little bit depending on the size of the onion. And now it's in smaller pieces that go into the food processor, or not the food processor, I'm sorry, the uh, the dicer, you know, much easier. And you can do the rest of your cuts, you know, using that. So I'm just gonna you know, dump them in there and you know rather than having to you know, do a whole bunch of cuts with your knife on the onion you know this makes it go, you know, so much faster sometimes you got to give it a little bit of force there sometimes it you know, it's a little bit tougher to get through so I'm going to go ahead and you know dump all this into my container and then you know, I'm going to get as much of it with my spoon here as possible and, not worried about getting every last morsel of it because I'm still going to be doing the jalapenos here. So, you know, I'll save the spatula for the end to get, you know, as much of it as I can after I've cut up the jalapenos. So just as before, you know, I'm going to just stir it up a little bit. And you know, again, it doesn't have to be perfect, but I'm just trying to, you know, get it mixed up a little bit while this, you know, container is a little bit less full and stuff's, you know, less likely to go, go up over the sides on it. All right. So it's mixed up fairly well. So now we're gonna do the jalapenos. And yeah, I'm just doing three of them here. So here you can you know, adjust how spicy you want it to be. If you'd rather have spicier pico de gallo, you can just you know, dice, or, you know, dice all of the jalapenos and keep the cores. That's where you really get your spice from. If you want it to be more mild, you can take all of the cores out. Or if you want somewhere in between, then you know, maybe keep one or two of the cores or a portion of you know, one of the cores, depending on what you like. So I'm going to go ahead and cut off the stems of all three of the jalapenos. 
and then we'll just throw those away. And this is where the jalapeno core comes in really handy. If I wasn't using that, I would have to cut you know, each of the jalapenos long ways and then you know, dig out the cores using my knife and that takes a little bit longer. This core is really easy. You just put it into the jalapeno right along the edge of the core and then dig in there and twist it. And I'll usually do a few times and then the core and most of the seeds come right out. So I'll go ahead and do this for my other two jalapenos. And you know, there goes the core. We'll go ahead and get this for the last one here. And there we go, simple as that. So depending on the size of jalapenos you got, sometimes they'll fit right into this dicer perfectly. If they're a little bit larger like these, sometimes you're better off you know, just cutting them in half and that'll make sure that they fit. So now we'll just dice them up. And yeah, there we go. So now I'm gonna go ahead and dump them in to the container. And this is when I'm gonna use my spatula and try to get everything out of this dicer that I can. You know, just so I'm not wasting any food here and actually using all the ingredients that I got. Because, you know, at this point we're done with this. The only thing left is the, you know, the lime juice. So there we go. I think I've got everything that I'm really gonna get out of here. I'm gonna give it you know, another stir, really get the jalapeno chunks you know, mixed in well with everything else. And at this point, all that's left is the lime juice. So if you're getting one of these you know, containers of pre-made lime juice, all you have to do is dump it in. It's actually really easy. Where if you're getting actual limes, then all you would really need to do is cut the lime in half with your knife, and then you can get a you know juicer. It's usually you know at any grocery store they'll be five, you know maybe ten dollars if you get a really nice one, or you can get them on Amazon and then just squeeze the lime juice out into you know the rest of the pico de gallo. So since I'm using this pre-done lime juice. I actually really like the flavor of the lime juice that it adds, so I'm just going to put a ton of it on here. Some people do make their pico de gallo with lemon juice, so that's certainly an option if, you know, if that's more to your taste. Yeah, I'm, I'm more of a lime juice guy myself, and I'm just going to you know, put all of this in here and really get that you know, good flavor in here with it. And then I'll give it one final stir. You know, Once all of my lime juice is in here, looks like that's just about it. And that'll just try to you know, get as much as possible mixed in with you know with all of the all the other you know, different ingredients in here. So there you have it. That's how to make homemade pico de gallo. Now as far as how I eat it, I like using these Tostito Scoops chips. So you can get these at you know most grocery stores. So they form a scoop shape to really you know, dig the pico de gallo out and put a lot of it into the chip. And these happen to be whole grain or multi-grain, so they're, you know, healthier than your typical chips. And you know, I found the chips usually stick together under the, you know, resistance when you're scooping out the pico de gallo a little bit better than some of the other ones. But, you know, feel free to use whatever chips you like. This is just, you know, my personal preference on it. All right, so that's how to make homemade pico de gallo. As you can see, it's really quick and easy, and it gives you a... Yeah, delicious but healthy snack to eat. So this amount for me, yeah, I'm making this on a Sunday. It'll probably be enough to get me through, you know, Wednesday or Thursday. So you know, most of the week. And then, yeah, you know, what's really nice about this is if you want a different amount, whether it's more or less, uh, yeah, you, know, you can just adjust the recipe. So if you know, let's say you have a family and you want to make twice as much, so there's plenty for everyone. Yeah, you know, just double it: twelve tomatoes, two onions, six jalapenos, and then. You know, adjust the lime or lemon juice accordingly based on your taste. Or, you know, if you want a little bit less, you know, maybe do four tomatoes, two jalapenos, a smaller onion, and, you know, a little bit less lime juice. So it's really easy to adjust, you know, based on your taste. 